Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and today with the properties of Laplace transform. First of all, let me tell you, this will be a little longer video. So you have to be patient. Okay. And my speed could also be a little fast and my volume would also be a little down because then I get very much tired when I talk loudly. Well, in the video, mostly I talk loud. I don't know why. Anyways, the properties. Number one. Do we need to prove them? Well, I would uh, just, you know, in a hurry, I would prove them as well. You basically, you know, if, if a signal is a linear combination of two signals, the corresponding Laplace transform would also be the linear combination of, of, of what? Of the individual Laplace transforms. If I write the Laplace transform equation over here, uh, so this would be a little easy for us. This is x of t exponential negative st dt. If you're talking about the proof of it, this was a simple. Uh, well, the ROC would be well over here. We would not only have to talk about the the the, the mathematical expression. We would also have to talk about the ROC. So the ROC for this would be what? ROC is equal to at least containing R1 intersection R2. R1 is for first one, R2 is for the second one. If you want me to prove it, X of S is this thing. Now my x of t is this thing. I would split this all. Negative infinity positive infinity alpha times x1 of t exponential negative st fine plus dt plus beta I would take common uh, a constant is outside uh, x2 of t exponential negative st dt this alpha is also constant have a look alpha x1 plus beta x2 okay uh, so for the example i want you to say as you know uh, let's say we have an example for example we have what x of t is equal to x1 of t minus x2 of t the individual Laplace transforms are given. X1 of S is 1 over S plus 1 with sigma greater than minus 1. And X2 of S is again given which is 1 upon S plus 1 into S plus 2 with again sigma greater than minus 1, the ROC. So if you apply the linearity property so if you apply the linearity property, so your x of s would be x1 of s minus x2 of s, which would be 1 upon s plus 1 minus 1 upon s plus 1 into s plus 2. And this would come out to be uh, uh, s plus 2 minus uh, 1 divided by s plus 1 into s plus 2 s plus 1 would cancel out and you would get a 1 upon s plus 2 for this now have a look the first is a right sided signal the second is a right sided signal so the overall signal would be a right sided signal sigma greater than minus 2 so you just keep this in mind okay so have a look for the first for the first what did we have we have a minus 1 and for the second also we had a minus 1 So, this is for minus 1, fine. The second is for what? Minus 1, minus 1. Now, now, now what do you have? I think I have a mistake somewhere. No, I don't have any mistake. So, the intersection I was talking about. Yes, the intersection I was talking about. So, if you see, so you would, if I have written that only it would be the intersection of the two. So, it would have been this ROC. But the ROC for this signal lies to the right of 
to the right of minus 2 which is not included over here which means that we have something more than the intersection of R1 and R2. Isn't that fine? It is. So now I hope you have understood it. The second property, time shift property. Now, uh, you know, writing all these properties, we would be assuming from the very beginning that x of t is a time domain signal having the corresponding Laplace transform x of s. Now, if you shift, if you shift the signal x of t minus t naught, so the corresponding signal has to be multiplied with what? Exponential of negative s times t naught the corresponding uh, Laplace transform and the ROC would be the same as previously. So over here your ROC is initially R okay. So if you uh, guys want to prove it again well if you have a plus over here you would have a plus over here fine. So again X of S x of t minus t naught negative st dt let me replace this by a new variable let's say i have t minus t naught is something tau right so t would be equal to tau plus t naught right and similarly the limits dt would be equal to d tau right dt would be equal to d tau and then what do you have the limits when t approaches negative infinity implies tau approaches what tau approaches what Infin negative infinity yes because you add something you subtract something that doesn't matter t approaches infinity implies what tau approaches infinity so which means what do we have which means let me open the marker you know the the caps so then it would be a little you know easy so what do we have x of tau exponential of negative s so in place of t what do i have now i have a tau plus t naught tau plus t naught uh, uh, and this is with respect to dt would be equal to d tau so well, if t naught is a constant, I could take it outside exponential of t naught. So which means I have exponential of s times t naught, and then I have negative infinity to positive x of tau, exponential of negative s tau, integration with respect to tau. The independent variable does not matter. This is your same x of s, s times t naught, x of s. We don't have any effect on the ROC. That's the second property. Shifting in the S domain, shifting in the S domain, which means a frequency shift, the third property. The frequency shift, which means now if I have an X of S minus S naught, what would be the effect on the signal? So now you would have to multiply this by an S times S naught times T. So, now uh, where were we? So I'm sorry, we had some disturbance outside and I had to stop it. Uh, so, so, so I was in the frequency shift property, yes? Yes, the frequency shift. And what would be the effect on ROC? So the ROC would be R plus real of S0. ROC would be R plus real of s naught which means you would include the point in the roc by which that has uh, uh, that has shifted okay so how do you do it so say i have an x1 of t i have a signal x1 of t which is this thing and i need the laplace transform of it so i need the laplace transform x1 of s let's say which is for this signal s naught of t x of t exponential negative st dt right 
So now what do you have? You can take, uh, you know, these are both with respect to T, so you don't have to take anything outside. You have an X of T, exponential of negative, S minus S naught into T dt. So which means what do we got? Have a look. If you have an x of t over here with respect to s, that is an x of s. But have a look. When you have an x of t with respect to s minus s naught, this means the Laplace transform has been shifted by an s naught units. So this implies what? That my x1 of s is the original x of s minus s naught, which means it has been shifted by an s naught units. This S not negative S not is representing the shift basically, which means if uh, multiplied by positive S not, if S not is equal to positive, so you write it down. If S not is equal to positive, this implies what? This implies that we have a negative shift, and negative shift means what? Shift toward the right, which means a a a a, a delay. Shift right by S not, right? If I want to uh, give you an example, let's say. Let's say we have an example. Uh, for example, I would use the green color. For example, what do I have? I have an x of t is an exponential of negative 3t u of t. x of t is exponential of negative 3t u of t. So for this, my Laplace transform would be 1 over s plus 3 with sigma greater than minus 3, right? Sigma greater than minus 3. Minus 3. Fine. Now, if I shift it, which means I have an exponential of negative 2t times x of t. Now, if my x1 of t is exponential of negative 2 times 2t times x of t, which means this is exponential of negative 2t into exponential of negative 3t, which is exponential of negative 5t. So, the corresponding would be 1 over s plus 5 with sigma greater than minus 5. So minus 5 and this what now the ROC has increased. So which means that this has been shifted by that amount, by the amount of S0. S0 was 2, so it has been shifted. S0 was positive, no, uh, negative. Negative. S0 was negative, so it has been shifted towards the right, which means it has been advanced. That is for property number 3, which is shifting in the S domain. Let's say I remove the board first. Okay, the next that is the fourth is the time scaling. The fourth is the time scaling. And time scaling, what do I mean? If I have a signal x of 80, let's say. So what would that be? The corresponding Laplace transform would be 1 upon the magnitude of A and x of S by A. And what about the ROC? So the ROC would also be equal to A times R. ROC is A times R and, and, and expanding expansion and uh, compression depends on the value of A of course. If A is uh, less than 1 so it would compress if A is greater than 1 it would expand. Let's say we have the proof of it. So X of L for T let's say I have X1 of S for this X1 of S is now for negative infinity to positive x of a t exponential of negative s t dt. Let me change the limit. Let me change the independent variable. Let alpha into t a into t is equal to some variable tau. So this implies that first of all my t would become what tau upon a and then the limits. When t approaches negative infinity, tau also approaches negative infinity. When t approaches positive infinity, the tau also approaches positive infinity. Isn't it like this? It is. So which means what? That I have my x1 of s as negative infinity to positive x of tau exponential of negative s and then you have a tau by a. You have a tau by a into no t. 
and d uh, d tau d d tau upon a so have a look have a look now what can i do this a is constant i could take it outside you have a one upon a negative infinity to positive x of tau exponential of you can write a negative s by a let me write it and then into tau d tau have a look the rest of the things are the same we have a one over a constant doesn't matter we have an s by a s by a means what that over here if you have s by a in the laplace transform you have s by a as well so this means what that x1 of s has become equal to 1 upon a into the original x by a isn't it like this it is now uh, why did i mention the absolute so the absolute i mentioned because for a negative values we would also have this thing so to, so this a i just generally took it to be a positive number if we have negative you would take it negative you would take over here you would take it the positive uh, take the absolute over here you would take the original value if it's negative so you would take it negative the and the roc mul gets multiplied by that thing roc multiplication means the poles gets multiplied by that thing anyways the next property the time reversal property the time reversal property which is property number five time reversal if you have x of minus t so you would have what x of minus s this is a special case of this you know time scaling uh, so negative a negative one's absolute is again negative one and and you multiply this so if you have an x of minus s the roc would be a times so roc is negative of r isn't it like this it is so uh what do we have do we need to prove it do we need to prove it so i don't think so i don't think so you can you can do it yourself you can do it yourself do i have any example to do so roc uh, a negative r means what negative r so uh, this means that if a signal was initially left-handed, then after time it was it to become the right-handed. So the corresponding Laplace transform would also do this. Initially the signal was right-handed, so after time it was it to become left-handed. So the corresponding Laplace transform also becomes left-handed. But if a signal is double-sided, now what happens? If a signal is double-sided and you have something like this, you have one pole at a negative one, you have another at a two, and in the middle is the roc right now if you time reverse it now if you time reverse it so the next roc would be over here it would become a one over here it would become a negative two now this would be the new roc effect if the signal is a double sided if a single sided so the right would become left left would become right and that is simply it so uh, the next is what Number sixth, it's the convolution property. Number sixth is the convolution property. Convolution property says what? If you have x1 of t convolved with x2 of t in the time domain, the corresponding Laplace transform gets multiplied in the frequency domain these are the very same things as we have discussed in the Fourier transform but you know the ROC has importance so the ROC would be again something like that as we discussed in the previous uh, example uh, in the very first one so ROC containing R1 intersection R2 so this would be containing R1 intersection R2 at least okay it could be more than that now you solve more more and more examples on this so you get the point fine okay so let us go for the proof let us go for the proof x one of s let's say i name it or, or no x of s is a negative infinity to positive infinity what do i have a signal is x one of t convolved with x two of t exponential of negative st dt fine 
you have a negative infinity to positive infinity for the convolution have a look negative infinity to positive x1 of t into x2 of t minus tau dt d tau d tau yes yes d tau x1 of tau x2 of t minus tau with respect to tau and you know this very well this is still here then you have an exponential of negative st dt isn't it like this it is let me replace it by a new variable let's say i have this t minus tau is some new variable lambda such that now dt would be equal to d lambda if you integrate it with derivative with respect to lambda right it would be equal to d lambda and have a look to the le limits the limits imply when t approaches negative infinity lambda would also approach negative infinity and if t approaches positive infinity lambda would also approach positive infinity and from here you can see that t is equal to lambda plus tau isn't it like this it is it is so i'm sorry if i'm missing the eye contact i believe you're getting it and i'm going at a very fast speed because you know these points from the beginning as well so anyways let's say i have negative infinity to positive infinity the next integration is like this negative infinity to positive infinity x1 of tau right then you have x2 i would write it like this t minus tau would be lambda then d tau i would d uh, oh, no 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 d tau would be the same d tau d tau would be the same then you have an exponential of uh, negative s and t would be what t is lambda plus tau so you have an exponential of negative s uh, tau and also an exponential of negative s lambda and finally dt i've just opened so have a look have a look what have we got one is blue the other is green the blue is x1 of tau with respect to tau the second is x2 of lambda with respect to lambda if i rearrange it if i rearrange it have a look negative infinity to positive infinity x1 of tau exponential of negative s tau with respect to tau and it's being multiplied with this thing x2 of lambda exponential of negative s lambda with respect to lambda isn't this x1 of s isn't this x2 of s examples you can solve as many as you wish anyways this was the which property number six number six was convolution number seven is conjugate number seven is conjugate if you take the conjugate of time domain signal x of t the corresponding laplace transform you also have to take the conjugate and also the s conjugate if you prove it how do you prove it how do you prove it you have x of s right x of s is negative infinity to positive infinity x of t exponential of negative st with respect to t now i need the conjugate and again have a look the the conjugate has no effect on the roc it would be the previous roc now if i take the conjugate of both the sides so which means i would have to take x conjugate on this side x conjugate on this side and s is a complex number in itself so i take it over here as well but have a look now to the original if here is x of t exponential negative st this corresponds to a laplace transform x of s but have a look over here we have an s conjugate over here which means that it is not corresponding over here so now what do i do i replace this s by an s conjugate replace s by s conjugate which means what which means that now i would have x conjugate of s conjugate 
x conjugate and x conjugate both and this would be equal to negative infinity to positive infinity x conjugate of t exponential of negative s so the double conjugate is again equal to s so s t dt now have a look this is the Laplace transform for this x conjugate of t and isn't it clear it is so before going into the next I remove the board this is number seven is done okay the eighth the eighth is the differentiation property the eighth is the differentiation property so the first in time domain if you take the derivative of a signal in time domain so you know in the frequency domain it has to multiply with an x of s with an s sorry with an s the roc would be again the same thing at least containing r roc containing r so the minimum roc would be this one maximum it could be greater than this as well fine yes do i need to prove it do i need to prove it well i do not but let's say if you have the inverse laplace transform relation x of t is negative infinity to positive 1 upon 2 pi j x of s exponential of s t d s right if you take the derivative on both the sides if you take the derivative on both the side so over here with respect to t right if you take the derivative with respect to t d d t of x of t so this would equal a 1 upon 2 pi j negative infinity to positive x of s and this is the thing that you need x the derivative of this thing because the, only this has the the t term so you have a d of s so which means this would come out to be 1 upon 2 pi j negative infinity to positive x of s and you have with respect to t so this s would come down s then again exponential of s t with respect to s and this s is constant take it outside of the integration this has been multiplied but have a look this is the first order if you have any kth order if you have any kth order which means if this is a k so over here you have to multiply with an s to the power k that is the differentiation in the time domain the next in the frequency domain so for that what do you have you have to multiply it by a negative t in the time domain negative t times x of t has the corresponding laplace transform d dt of x of s roc is the same no effect roc is equal to r you can have as many examples as you wish by yourself okay so as you know that for x of t we have a corresponding Fourier transform x of s which is like this now if I differentiate it with respect to s right so if I have the d ds on both the sides so over here I would have it with respect to this thing only so d d s exponential of negative s t with respect to t so this would give me what x of t and this thing would come down uh, uh, negative t would come down right negative t would come down and the rest is you have exponential of negative s t again with respect to t again so this negative t uh, now now have a look now this this links to this 
डी डी एक्स ऑफ एक्स ऑफ एस लिंक्स टू द सिग्नल एक्स ऑफ टी मल्टीप्लाइड विद ए नेगेटिव टी सो दैट इज वॉट आई वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट इफ यू लिंक इट ओवर देर इज एंड इट लाइक दिस इट इज Now let me tell you keep an important property in your mind you have an exponential of negative a t u of t you know this is 1 over s plus a for this but if you have something like this when you have a t to the power n exponential of negative a t u of t previously we have not seen this t to the power n over here so this is another important property you have an n factorial divided by s plus a to the power n plus 1 and the roc is again sigma greater than minus a so this is something important as well this is something important as well now one last property integration one last property is integration number 9 integration uh let's say in time first we have over here also both so in time what do you do if you integrate negative infinity to t x of tau d tau the corresponding fourier transform has to be now divided by an s as we saw that in the differentiation for multiplied by an s so now you have to divide by an s the roc the roc would be what it would be the r plus real of s greater than 0 or intersection this thing which means now it would be the part on the right half plane how is that why is that because you know that for a right sided signal the 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 the, the, the roc has to lie to the right of the rightmost pole right so have a look over here a new pole has been added at s equal to 0 a new pole has been added s equal to 0 so which means now the roc has to lie to the right of this pole as well the proof of it the proof of it you can this is your homework this is your homework what homework <laughs> you don't have anything to do with uh with this okay you can do it yourself not a homework let it be like this to understand the roc To understand the ROC, take an impulse signal. Laplace is one. ROC is the overall S plane. If you take the integration now of this impulse, this would be U of t, which is a step signal, and the corresponding Laplace transform for a step is one over s with sigma greater than zero. So have a look. Do you not understand this? Do you not understand this? For one, you have the entire s plane. For the other, you have only the right hand side. So the intersection of these two does it not mean that it is only the right hand side? It means so now the ROC point should be. clear as well in frequency domain in frequency domain in frequency so what do you have uh, uh, over here if uh, uh, if you take the integration and integration limits are let's say from s to infinity x of s uh, so uh, with respect to s So the corresponding time domain signal has to be divided by a t. Let's say we prove it as well. I have some space, so I would prove it. Okay, anyways, no problem. So the the equation is like this: x of s is negative infinity to positive x of t exponential negative s t dt. If I uh, uh, take the integration from s to infinity x of s ds. So what would I have to do on the other side? Negative infinity to positive x of t. So over here s term is this one. So I have s to infinity exponential negative s t with respect to s and then d t. So let me solve the green pen with with the green pen outside. Okay. Let's say this is s to infinity exponential negative s t d s. So this would give you an exponential of negative s t divided by negative t. 
and the limits are from s to infinity. So you put an infinity over here, you have an exponential of a negative infinity minus exponential of st. Uh, isn't it like this? Let me check first. Where have I written this? So this is an exponential of uh, s to infinity, right? So you have an exponential of Hmm. No, I'm having some mistake. I am having some mistake. And the mistake is that I have to put the value of s, not of t, not of t. These are the limits with respect to s, right? So you put s equal to uh, negative infinity over here, so you should get a positive infinity. We have a positive infinity. So anyway, this is fine. Then you have an exponential of, so s is s minus of st divided by minus t. Exponential of this is zero, negative infinity is zero. You have a negative, negative would become positive. The overall thing is you have a negative st divided by t for this term. So which means what have you got? What have you got? You have got like this, that the integration of x of s gives you what? Gives you integration x of t into an exponential of negative st. You have to take 1 upon t outside. So 1 upon t has become your constant and this is what I have. Uh, not constant. Let me say yes. So 1 upon t has become your constant. Or you can also say that the integration of x of s is for the signal x of t divided by t. You can also say it in that terms. So anyways, that is it for this video. That is it for the properties. Well, I was expecting it to be longer, but I think I just finished it in a very high speed. So I'm sorry if I've gone fast, but you know, you know these things. The only property that I did not prove is the integration in time domain and let it be your homework. Let it be your homework. And this other property that I have written, so this is also something of great importance. The proof is not the issue. You can prove it uh, very easily from the thing that you have. Exponential negative t u of t is equal to uh, Laplace transform is uh, 1 upon s plus a. So you can do it from there as well. This is something important. That is it for the properties. See you in the next lecture very soon, inshallah. With I don't know whatever the topic is. Well, uh, the, 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 we have uh, two more properties, I believe. The theorems, that is the initial value theorem, final value theorem, maybe they are the next. So, anyways, I don't know. Till the next video, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. And I'm noticing one thing that you are watching the video, but you're not subscribing to the channel. So, please do subscribe to the channel as well. And remember me in your prayers. Also, goodbye.